spawning. Let me log into the vCenter and then I'll start in a few seconds. <laughs> Here we go. <coughs> so what we are discussing yesterday? Local storage. And and uh, it won't work in real time, like we have to go with uh, network storage. We worked so, the... yesterday we are discussing about local storage. We, we just took an example HP DL380 is the intent server is there. No? So, if that has a 16 drives, then how it could be managed? The, how managed. it could be managed? So, that is one thing we discussed. <clears throat> I said local, local storage is not sufficient for VMware. Administ VMware uh, functionalities to work or VMware administration purpose. I'll not say VMware administration purpose. No, uh, majority of the functionalities are uh, dependent on the network storage, I'll say, okay? So, what do you mean by network storage? First of all. Mm. What do you mean by network storage? It's like a storage uh, or a data storage uh, devices uh, okay. stored at particular so location. I, okay, okay, yeah. Remotely. Yeah, you're trying too hard to explain, but let me put a simple. Let me put this in a simple way. You have a server. And in the front, I said there are 16 slots to insert 16 drives. Agree? Yes. Okay. Now, in yesterday's discussion, I said if this got exhausted or this got full, what you'll do? You don't have option. You cannot insert hard drives on the sideways or a backside. Right? Yeah. The design is such a way in the front you have a slots and in the slots you will insert the hard drives. That's it. Okay, so local storage is not sufficient. That is one one thing. That is not exactly the business case, but the business case is something different that we will discuss in next coming next coming few sessions. But I just want to understand what is this network storage means. So whatever the discussion that we are doing. Everything is in one building that you call it as. Agree? Right? Whatever the device that you are placing, you will place it in a room or a building. Okay. It has the racks, it has the power cables and power supply, <coughs> cooling and network connectivity. So why can't we put some bigger box in the same room and okay fill with all the hard drives fill with all the hard drives and take some cables take some cables and connect to this server if I say some cables how many cables you recommend at least two at least two redundant. For redundant, right so <clears throat> if this room capacity is 2500 physical boxes means you have These kind of servers around 2500 boxes means for 2500 servers in the same room or the same building so how many cables that you require around 5000 odd cables you require and and 
5000 odd cables require and this box agree or disagree so that okay part of this part of this storage is allocated to one server and part of this storage is allocated to 200 500 2500 server getting my point so who, whoever requests the storage i will allocate from here that is the aim okay so your actual hard disk are racked, oh, sorry your actual hard disk are placed in a closed container or a closed rack you say this is of normal rack only and it's filled with all the hard drives okay so from here you are allocating storage to rest of the devices in the room or a building okay over the cable called network agree or disagree yes got the justification now in, in, in a leman i'm just explaining in a leman language okay so now i just want to understand who all supply these boxes when i said please be on mute i'm, I'm getting some noise when i said i want to know some of these vendors who supply the rack servers you people told me hp cisco dell right ibm super micro so on so xyz okay similarly you there must be someone who can supply these things in the market right so Dell EMC, Meta, okay, HP, 3PAR, Nimble, sometimes it's hard to remember the, yeah, HP Nimble story, yes, okay, and Uh, pure storage, yeah. And who else? Who else? Who else? Okay, that's fine. At least we have five. So, okay. Understood? Only, only few companies are there. They will supply only storage. So you take any storage or sorry, you take any vendor. What kind of storage that they supply boss? Again, three types only. The basic will not change, right? That SATA, that SSS, sorry, SSD and SAS, right? They will also insert the same type of drives in the box, but this server has a limitation of 16. This can hold up to 5,000 or 6,000 hard drives. Example, it may, it may be, this number might be higher or might be lower. Clear? Now, from this box to every other server in the room, you should connect cables now there are multiple ways to assign the storage that you call it as technically right storage protocols this picture not all the protocols that we have copy this image let's go back and let's insert here visible visible or 
some more? Yes. Yes. Yeah. What are all the protocols we have? So, too confusing, right? Let's go back and talk about something in our way. <clears throat> so, basically, there are two types of storage that is, one is sand storage, okay, another one is NAS storage. I told you yesterday. Have you done some, some googling on this? What you found? Yes. SAN is a uh, storage area network. It's uh, uh, store data in block level. Block. And uh, storage network. area network. Okay. And the second one? It's file server. Okay, network attach store. storage. Okay, file definition wise, okay. And you told me it's a block and it's file. But and uh, oh, sand, again, uh, sand. again, I want to understand in Lehman where exactly you will use these two. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, San is uh, uh, used in a local area network. Uh, no, wrong. Local area network. What is this local area network? I said everything is in the room. It means yes, everything sir. is in yes. local. So yes, there's yes. no point of local area network. Uh, San is a, uh, uh, more faster than uh, NAS. San is faster than? And NAS is slow, okay. Yeah, so SAN has two different, technically two, okay, if you want to elaborate, three, okay, two different protocols. One is fiber channel, another one is iSCSI, SCSI, okay, and also NAS again has a two different protocols, CAFS, NFS. The NAS, uh, uh, single storage device, right? <clears throat> I said single storage device is this, this box. This box can support all the four. You understood? Okay. Okay. I have this box in front of me. Okay, you want me to show some pictures of the same? Yes. Let me pause the recording. Let me, yeah. We have to keep uh, the physical servers there. Uh, Main yes, except physical servers. We have to keep it in all that the, room. All the, no, no, no. And if there I said, you can create VM. If I said data center, your physical servers and your storage, your network, everything will be the present in the same building. Okay. Understood? If I said HP yeah. DL380 Gen 10, on top of it, you will install ESXA. It means this will become your ESXA host. Your host will be in the same room. And on the back side, if you remember the back panel, the first class or the second class I explained, the back panel of the server, you have PCA yeah. slots, empty slots. Mm. You need to move those two plates, right? And you need to put some extra components over there in order to connect these cables. I said from, from this box, you must connect two cables to this server. Okay, mm -hmm. where you connect? There must be some plug, right? If you want to connect some cable, there must be some socket. So on the back side, that PCS slot you need to remove it or if you are if you are purchasing it for specific purpose, you have to make sure your servers must be equipped with the devices which you are required to allocate the storage. 
Okay, I will discuss that leisurely later on. Okay, let's understand these protocols first. Then we'll, we'll, we'll explain the architecture of the story, how it works and all. Okay? Okay, okay. So, you have four protocols here. These two protocols, as you said, faster. These two protocols, as you said, there's slow performance. Fine. In, in VMware world, what all the protocols that we use? We use this, we use this, and we use this. This is not used. <clears throat> okay, so if I want to allocate some storage from this box to this, there are three ways to allocate the storage. Remember. Clear? From that box to any ESXA host. Now, before we go, go on discussing or move on other discussion, let's understand what is the difference between these two protocols and these two protocols. Okay, so if people are working in organizations, right? Whenever you go to office in the morning, you log in, you will see some network device here somewhere. Have you observed in your office laptop or desktop? Share folder. Yes. Yes. What was that? What was that? It's sharing folder in uh, network uh, uh, server. You got the answer, right? Yeah. It's a share folder. Share folder within, within the building and over the network you are accessing it. Agree? Yes. yes. Okay. So you have a C drive, you have a network folder. What kind of data that you put it on network folder? Let's say you have a team of 10 members. Okay, manager asks you to update the daily updates in the Excel sheet. Okay, place it in the share folder. What you will do? You open it and update the data, close it, inform to the team in the chat saying, I'm done, please update yours. Agree or disagree? Agree. Okay, or else if you if you have some data which you want to keep it uh, in the share folder for other people to use, you just keep it over there so that yes. others can use it. Or you have some softwares where you want to use it for a day-to-day -day purpose, you just paste all the softwares over that folder so that everyone can view those softwares and if they want, they can use it. If you want, you can use it. Majority of the purpose is this only, right? Yes. Okay, now I have a query. So I have Excel, right? I'm just opening my spreadsheet. From where it, the program is loading? Where this Excel program is installed? Near C drive. C drive might be. C drive, right? Why can't you install Excel program on Z drive, network drive? Uh, we can uh, install it, but uh, the speed will depend upon the network. Hmm. Right? Have you ever seen uh, the... We, we are doing it with the, with the help files. of the track. Program file. That's, that's the share for, I mean, that's the thin drives you will mount it on the Citrix. That is different architecture. In your local desktop, have you seen any programs that are running from Share folder? No. No, right? No. Most of the time you see your, your spreadsheet is opening from C drive, but you have some file. Okay, if you have some file, you, you put the data and save this file in Z drive. In short, you are keeping the files in Z drive. Agree? Yes. You are running the program from C drive and keeping unwanted data or maybe useful data or common data for your team in the Z drive. Yeah. So the Z drive will work over this protocol, Common Internet File System, or SMB, you call it S in Windows terminology. In short, if you have a machine, you have a D drive, and you have another machine, you want to map it as a Z drive, 
connect the cable, take this IP, take the IP of this machine and slash slash IP slash D dollar. This, this will automatically mount if you have a permission on the server and you will see Z drive over here. Means your actual disk is D drive and which is local drive on this machine. But this local drive on this machine will be mounted as a network drive on this machine. Agree? Yes. Understand the functionality? Yes. yes. Yeah. So you treat this whole box as a machine one machine and you created one drive or one folder okay and you are mounting here as a shared drive over cfs and you will use it for you will use it for dumping the data that's it fair, fair enough yes. similarly if both are windows this is how it works if the both are Linux, you will use NFS. Any confusion on this? No. If I want to exchange, if I want to exchange some data between two Windows machines, the protocol is CFS. If I want to exchange some data between two Linux machines over the network, the protocol is NFS, Network File System. Clear? Clear. Yeah. Any confusion? What if we want to do between Windows and Linux? SMB. Uh, WinSCP, right? Okay. Uh, WinSCP? No, I never heard. Okay, you, you Google it. WinSCP is there. Some tool. You can copy the data from Windows desktop to Linux machine. Okay. Okay. So the aim is not about these protocols. What kind of storage that you will allocate to your VMware? Okay, you are deviating. I'm not deviating. What is the difference between this NAS and SAN? I want to differentiate. Clear enough? Yes. Okay, yes. so you told me NAS is file storage. Means you are just putting the files in the share folder. Justified file storage is just placing the file. <coughs> Hello, Vivek, bit louder. Hello. Yeah. Speak bit louder, please. If you want to speak, speak bit louder. Okay. Fine. So, from the same box, from the same box, I want to allocate some storage to the another machine over SAN. Over the SAN, if I allocate something that will be mounted as a local drive in the machine. <laughs> not getting? You're not getting? No. Uh, not getting. Okay. So I have one Windows server. Okay. The Windows server requirement is. SQL DB I need to run on this Windows server. The requirement is something like this C drive C drive 150 GB D drive 4 TB E drive 4 TB F drive 2 TB G drive 1 TB or 500. This is the requirement. Okay. Now, what I did, I just purchased this HP box with two hard drives of 150 GB. 150 GB. Both are SSDs. Clear? Okay. Yeah. So I will combine both of them by using RAID 1 and one logical drive will be formed which is 150 GB. I will install C drive on top of it. C drive. Understood? 
Yeah. Now, yeah. these four, these four drives from this box, I will connect some cables on the backside of the server. Okay. And I will allocate the, I'll allocate four different blocks. Block storage, you told me. Someone told me, both of you. Who told me? Vivek or Sunil? Who told me? Yes, ma'am. Sunil. Okay, right? So, I will create four blocks here and I will allocate to this server. Okay, also, there is another, another file share is there. Don't worry. There is another file share of 200 GB. That is different. Let's keep aside. Okay. So these four blocks are allocated to this via these two. You know the difference between fiber cables and normal network cables? Fiber optic cables and normal yeah. Ethernet cables. Yes. Right. If I connect Ethernet cables, I will get 1 Gbps speed. Okay. If I connect fiber cable based on the cost, based on the money I spend, I will get 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 Gbps and so on. Based on the amount you spend, the speed will vary. Minimum you will get a 4 Gb. 4 Gbps from here to here. So which one is costlier? Fiber. Fiber channel is costlier Fiber. and 1 Gbps iSCSI is cheaper. There is another kind of iSCSI that we will discuss. 10 Gbps. I'll explain that later on. 10 Gb copper cables are there in the market. So they, that will support 10 Gbps speed. Okay. So I have decided for, with the 4 Gbps connectivity so from here to here i connected two cables two fiber cables and i have allocated these four blocks okay once if i go to disk management disk management i see c drive and another four drives unallocated drives will display c drive is already formatted and using it right yes. that is there in the disk management okay along with that another four hard drives will be mounted over there as the local drives but they are not actually local. They are in network. Network drives. But but the SAN protocols. What what SAN protocol? SAN protocol will have to purchase some component. I said right. I'll explain that later on. These component. What it will do? Whatever the storage that is being allocated from this box to this box will be simulated as a local. That means this system will treat its mine only. It's not from the network. Yes. Okay. So they will mount it as a D, E, F, G based on the sizes. Okay. Just format it, use it. And you have a Z drive, by the way. Z drive is there. You will you will mount the Z drive over another normal cable. Normal internet cable is there, no? 1 Gbps cable. That is also connected, right? Okay, not directly to this box, somewhere in the network in the switch. That switch that switch has a connectivity to this box. Okay, that connectivity part we'll do we'll discuss later on. Okay, a lot of things to discuss on this storage part. Okay, let's go one by one by one. <coughs> so this Z drive is also mounted here. It will show as a network drive 200 GB and uh, 60 GB is free. Some 140 GB is already used. So in that 140 GB SQL Server 2019 binary ISO files will be there. You just copy those ISO files and put it on your desktop on this machine and try to install the SQL Server. Now that SQL Server go and install in D and E. D and E for SQL database, F drive for backup, and G drive for logs. This is the configuration of SQL Server. And C drive is only dedicated to OS. Understood? Yes, sir. From C D A F or C D E F G. C has local drives. D E F G. These are from 
network over the SAN protocol. Now tell me the difference between SAN and NAS. If you allocate some storage over the NAS, over the NAS, that will be mounted as a Z drive. You can only place the files, copy the files, okay, and read the files, write the files. That's it. Okay, so now, okay, let's go a bit basic level. What file properties you have? Read, write, execute. Right? Over the NAS, over the NAS, I'm not denying execution is not possible, possible, but most of the NAS files, you will use it for read and write purpose only. You cannot execute, means you will not install any program files inside the NAS drive. If you allocate some storage over the SAN, you will use to execute as well, means your SQL server is running on top of SAN storage. SQL application is up and running on top of D drive, means your, your D drive is holding some program files, it is running some application on the backend. Clear? Yes. The difference between SAN and NAS? Hmm? Yes. Now, now, understand this box can support both the protocols. In short, all the four protocols. If this box supports all the four protocols, that box you call it as unified storage box emc vnx netapp fast you can google it two examples clear yes. hmm? so in my lab i cannot bring this box for you which is minimum minimum cost is somewhere around 10 lakhs at least right so we'll do the <coughs> simulation part for the same in the tomorrow session but my question is why we need all these things by the way why we need all these things network storage why we need a network storage we discussed so many things uh, since, uh, since last 30 minutes okay my question will remain same why we need network storage in VMware. I'm client not can demand. Uh, no, no. Client will never demand anything. Client need a can, business. We can store uh, more data on t on network storage. Hmm? Any any other requirement? I mean, think in terms of VMware perspective. VMware, make, uh, VMware features and all. Okay. VMware features and all. Please recollect. Uh, no, no, no. I don't want textbook answers. Reliable, flexible, safe, high performance, high latency, low mm -hmm. latency. No, no, no. I don't want all these things. Think some of the features that VMware supports in VMware perspective. We discussed at the starting stage. I said HA, DRS, SFT, this and that. Okay, to run some of those features, to run some of those features, I told you, I told you to run some of those features, we need network and storage must be properly configured in earlier stage, I told you, right? Yes. Okay, let's understand one scenario, then you'll get a clear picture. <clears throat> I have three ESXA hosts in my lab. Three or imagine all the three are HPDL. Okay. So local storage is there. Some local storage is there. Forget about the numbers, amount of storage. Some local storage is there, and you formatted these drives and use created as a data store. Formatted these drives and created data store formatted these drives and created data store and what is vm on top of esxi you will run the virtual machine right 
That is the aim. Yes. You have a VMs on top of. Okay. On top of ESXi, you have some VMs they are running. Where they will sit? Where they will sit? What is virtual machine by the way? Set of files. The file what all the files that we discussed. You collect the third or fourth class. Different files. The purpose of the each file I explained clearly. Remember? Yes. Okay. So VM is VM is simply set up a files they will they will sit on this data store under one folder with the server name server name may be c there will be one folder inside that folder you'll see some nine or ten files right and another machine there will be another folder another machine there will be another folder you'll not call it as a folder technically call it as a directory right So for four machines, you'll have four different directories. Inside the directory, you have some set of files. These files will help you to run these virtual machines and customers are logging in like this. Agree? Yes. Okay. Yes. This, this is individual server one, two, three. There is no vCenter, nothing. Okay. Standalone ESXA server. Why we need a vCenter? That's a different story centralized management this and that textbook answers no okay let's keep aside the discussion so imagine esxi host is down what happened to these four machines if it is down means if it is down means completely powered off machines will also power off hmm? vms will also power off or off okay now this is hp machine okay you as a vmware admin what you will do what you will do we will log into ilo and check why you'll, it's you'll get a you, you'll get a ticket first of all once the server is down you'll get a ticket right yes so you'll, you'll or you will get a high priority email Something is yes. down. Okay, now you will try to log in into ILO and see what's going on. And you found that you found that the power supply, two power supplies will be there, right? The, both the power supplies are faulty now. Okay. On the back end, on the back end, two power supplies will be there, and both of them are faulty. So your ILO is not not working. Because if the power supply is there, then you see the firmware is up and running. Even the server is down, the firmware will access. You'll be able to access the server over the firmware, over the ILO. But both the faulty, both the power supplies are faulty, means the server is completely dead. You cannot even access the ILO. Okay. Clear enough? Yes. Now you will call that data center guy and ask ask him to go and check what's wrong with the server he'll say yeah. okay he'll say no 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 power supply on the server or nothing is displayed on the front panel and no lights no amber no no green nothing everything is blank right there is no option now you will go and open p1 case with hp they will come after four hours and they will find that they will find that the power supplies are gone, man. Okay, do one thing. It is in the contract. Okay, what I will do, I will simply replace with the new power supplies and power on. And they will go. The whole process will take 8 hours. Example. Okay, yes. and you, will, you will close your ticket and you, you go home. Yes. Understood? Today's work is done. You will go home. But the four servers which are serving for the customers... What about these four servers? Four, four servers, if I said four virtual machines. If it is one server, if it is impacted for a one day, it's okay, manageable. But due to one server, 
four different business or business applications or four different servers or four different customer applications are impacting due to VMware. If the VMware is not there in the picture, you will simply install one hardware, one OS, one application. You are happy. Right? Right. But you only told me no no vmware software will give you a lot of features this and that and then uh, finally you purchase the vmware and now you are running four parallel four the applications of four business servers or on the same server and on the base server you completely brought down earlier one application down okay and uh, hundred dollars loss now four applications are down four hundred dollars loss for whole day will the customer accept it no no in that situation what we'll do no 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 vm vmware has got some other features okay for that we have to pay little more what is that little more vcenter okay vcenter has a lot of features where esxa host cannot support what kind of features ha drs ft this that then a lot of features are there okay and centralized management okay and you can do a lot of things in the vcenter you just do uh, one thing, okay, spend some more $2,000 for one year, you will get vCenter and you have to run only one machine, one virtual machine with 16 GB RAM is enough so that vCenter can be installed and you can manage everything in a vCenter. Fine. Now you brought the vCenter into picture. Yeah. Right? Now you, are v, you, you have a vCenter, everything inside the vCenter, you have three hosts. And you created a cluster, whatever the discussion that we did, we did so far, you did everything. Network configuration is also done properly. Still, mm -hmm. now this host is gone. vCenter is there. Okay. Still, same Ooh. condition. The host is gone. These, mo these four machines, these four machines are running on the storage. Host is gone uh, due to power supply. This this data store is also gone. These VMs also gone. Now, how vCenter will know that these VMs are running and uh, how it will uh, rerun on this or how it will restart on this? They must something is missing, right? Yeah. We need what a centralized storage for that. What is missing? The storage it's is also storage. going offline. The storage is also going offline along with the host. Okay. So at, at least yeah. if you can if you can maintain your storage separately in a separate box and create a data store from the storage which you have got from network storage. Okay. Allocate the same storage to all the three boxes. Now you run all these four machines on this, run three machines on this storage and these four machines on this storage. Okay. And even though if those host is down completely after five minutes, vCenter will come and look for the files on this storage because the storage is separate, some other box. Okay. This storage is also visible here. So, this storage, this vCenter will instruct host number two saying, I am I am 100% confident that host one is dead. Can you please confirm? So, host two will go and check for the files inside this data store. I told you one file property. What is that file property? There will be one VMX file, the main configuration file. You remember? Yes. Machine. Okay. Whenever you power on, yes. whenever you power on, this will this will become read only. Understood? Whenever you power off, this will become read write. Fair enough. So now this host will come into this data store and check for all the four VMX files. See if they are in read only mode or read write mode. If they are in read write mode means the host is dead vms are down now 
you can pick those four VMX files and start two of them here and start two of them here. Possible? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now you you got the you got the clear picture why you need a network storage. Why can't you require sorry, why can't you depend on the local storage? Local storage will be used for very limited purposes. Okay. Just like my ESX server is there, no? Okay. It has a local storage. Local storage is there, no? Yes. So the uh, all the three are local storage only. Inside this data, if you go to browse ISO, I put all the ISO files, dumping files, dump data, no use. My only I need when I am installing in a new server. That's it. Otherwise, no use. Right? Yes. Similarly, similarly. These local data stores, you can use it as a content libraries. Content libraries means just to paste or uh, store those uh, ISO files or templates. Understood? Yes. And actual production servers, you can place it on this network storage. Fair enough. Understood why you need local storage and why you need. Network storage. Right? Any questions? No, rack. We have one rack and in. Hello. Yeah. So, uh, we have one rack on uh, storage, network storage, and in that we have different uh, storage devices like one, two, three. You have mentioned the uh, red box. And. Uh, if any one of them is down, like from three, if any one of them is down, then uh, down. what will You're happen? talking about storage box or talking about server? Storage Basically. box. Storage box. Storage box architecture is different. Okay. Storage box are designed in a such a way they will sustain even if the one one complete bay is down. This this bay is completely down. Still the box will sustain and still they will supply the storage. Even if the complete, uh, what I can call it as, uh, uh, rack is down, you have a n number of racks in the room to supply the storage. Not even single box at the enterprise level. So they all are connected to each other, like. Uh... Yes, they will give you high availability. Don't worry. I cannot explain all these okay. things in the VMware class because that's purely a storage concepts. That's purely okay, sand okay. storage products. But I gave you a brief overview how it works. Yeah, got it. Okay. So that functionality is not a matter here. Only thing is you need to understand how you get this storage into your VMware world and how you can use it for your day to day business. Because yeah. this is supplied by someone else. Is supplied by someone else the product portfolio is something mm -hmm. different there's no link with your vmware 6.7 administration the only thing is mm -hmm. without that storage you cannot run all these vmware features got it no. perfect any questions no all right no, sir. yeah i'll stop here Okay, so we can discuss more tomorrow on the same. If I said more on this means not this one, sorry. More on this means how to construct the storage, how to construct the storage in my lab and how I can assign the sand storage to these ESXA servers and how I can do the migration here and there. Those things we'll see in next coming two, three sessions. Okay. 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 Yeah. I'll stop okay. here. Let's catch up tomorrow. Same time. Thank you. Yeah.